Hey kings, queens, and everything in between. Welcome back to another episode. One time for a good time. And for today's episode, I kind of want to get something off my chest. I have been struggling with this for many years now subconsciously. And I never knew where to stand on this topic. So I'm just going to get into it. Last night, I watched the beautiful 10 out of 10 movie, The Judas and the Black Messiah. Um, yes, I know I'm late. It has been out for a little bit, but... I decided to sit down and watch it. And if you don't know what the movie's about, it's about Fred Hampton, the leader of the Black Panther Party. And, you know, he makes free meal programs for the black community. He protects the black community. And pretty much the government tried their hardest to label them as terrorists, um, as criminals, as the mafia, pretty much to do everything so they wouldn't unify and become bigger uh, for a very long time in that point in history. The Black Panther Party was a threat to the government and they were doing anything and everything to disable it. And they spoke on the Fred Hampton story about, you know, Bill, the informant for the CIA that got him murdered and killed. And if you haven't seen it, I'll just, I just highly recommend you watching it it is a tearjerker and it's a beautiful part of our history that was greatly displayed in a a great way um so for a long time in my life when it I I am very much a social justice person when there's any place where I can fight or can fight for somebody I, I want to but I found out being a entertainer, being a content creator is hard. You look at history, you know, people fought for a lot of things for many years that some have went down in the books and some have been forgotten. And being raised, I always wanted to fight for something. I always wanted to have a bigger meaning than me. When you look at Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, who we knew, and when you look at all these beautiful names in history and you see how they literally fought for something bigger, regardless if it was freedom, um, civil rights, segregation, education, property, just speech the ability to grow to gather and hell just be human when when I see that when I see how people dedicated their lives to do so much to make a change for not only their generation but generations after them you know it it, it always inspired me to want to do the same But growing up in this era and growing up in a place where these things no longer matter and stay with me for a second while I say this. Nowadays, a lot of people search for validation. A lot of people search for likes. Um, They search to be the next big thing. How can I be the next big thing? It's kind of in a way selfish. You know, it's never community. It's never coming together it's more how can I help myself the reason I love history so much is because you see that people had to come together people had to bring communities together to make even the slightest of change and what bothers me is that nowadays everything is so 15 seconds you got 15 seconds and that's it you know, and if there is a chance for people to fight or to make a change is because somebody was murdered, somebody was killed or something bad happened. It's never a continuous fight, in my opinion. In my opinion, the only thing that stirs up things or brings things to the limelight is because somebody was killed, um, because because somebody was was hurt or abused or you know, harass, but I feel like even with the biggest social justice fights, like 
George Floyd, rest in peace, King. Breonna Taylor, rest in peace, Queen. You know, the list goes on. Um, Trayvon Martin, Rodney King, uh, Oscar Grant. I, I mean, I, I can literally sit here for 30 years and say every name in the book that has been abused or hurt in some way when it comes to the government and, and when it comes to society. And I feel like even though these stories were important, even though these stories may change, no one is talking about them anymore. Rodney King, Oscar Grant, Trayvon Martin. Like, I feel like the only time they are brought up is when somebody else is killed. Then it's like, yeah, that's what happened to Oscar. That's what happened to Rodney. That's what happened to X, Y, and Z. That's what happened to, you know, da-da-da. But it's like, why is it that when something bad happens, that's when we bring up all the other shit? It's like, we need to keep these conversations along. I, for me personally, ever since I became an entertainer, I've always had this internal battle of, am I saying the right things? I realize I have a platform. I realize I have people I can talk to. And if you know me, yes, I come on here. I talk about mental health a lot. I damn near talk about it every episode, regardless if it's depression, anxiety, body dysmorphia, or whatever. But there are times where I look at my content and I think, am I speaking about the right things? Are the things I'm speaking about important? Yes, depression, anxiety, body dysmorphia is important, but then I look at bigger issues and I look at world hunger and I look at slavery, I look at human trafficking, uh, police brutality, I look at people losing their rights to, to marry, to love, to be free, and I look at my continent and I think, is it enough? Is it enough? Yes, depression is a worldwide thing. A lot of people suffer from it. Anybody can relate to insecurity. Anybody can relate to body dysmorphia. But when you see people, from my perspective, when I see people dying and I see people having to take damn near a horse and a mule to even get to school, having to wash their clothes and nasty fucking water just to even be clean when I see situations like this I look at myself and I think am I doing enough and that's what bothers me because this is what brought this is what came out of me when I watch the Judas and the Black Messiah Fred Hampton was 21 years old when he was murdered you look at Billie Holiday. She made one song called Strange Fruit and she was murdered. You look at all these people that fought. That fought for their their people, that fought for their community. And it takes a movie. It takes a documentary. It takes whatever just to be seen. Nina Simone, she said herself, she said, the reason I died out in the music industry is because I wouldn't stop talking about what was happening to my people. And the reason I wasn't bigger than what I sh should have been was because I didn't move on, was because nobody was talking about the topics that I was still talking about. That's the problem to me is that people move on so quickly people forget quickly when you see the power when you see the movement martin luther king jr malcolm x everybody else had when you see the 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 states the people they brought together at their age fred hampton like i said was 21 he was 21 years old and he had the government, the United States government looking at him as he was a threat. Billie Holiday, she made one song, Strange Fruit, and she was a threat. Sam Cooke made a song. When I look at 
these people in history and I see how they used their platform and whatever way it was, regardless if it was making music or saying speeches or creating art or making commercials or rioting or marching, they did what they had to do for their future, for themselves. And I always sit back and I look at myself and I say, you have a platform. You could be talking about this, but you're bringing up this because you want to stay relevant. That's the problem is that you have to stay relevant to make a change. I can talk about whatever the fuck I want to talk about because this is my podcast I, and that's what I do. Mental health is a passion of mine. That is the utmost top priority for me is mental health. Making people laugh is a priority for me. Being a good person is a priority for me, but also fighting for whatever needs to be fought for is a priority for me that I'm not using. I read a quote on Instagram that said, the most notorious cults only had a following of 30 people. The most notorious groups only had the following of 20 people. And when I think of shit like that, I think, wow, I don't need a group of people behind me to make a change. I need myself. I will have followers. I will have people that could support me and could help me lead to make a difference. But you starts with one person. It starts with one person. I, I, I can't think about all the nights maybe Martin Luther King Jr. or Malcolm X or Fred Hampton probably stood alone screaming to the world, we have to make a change, we have to make a change before someone heard or listened to them until they became who they were. I think about all the nights even somebody that wasn't even particular of their stature, even people that probably just wanted to fight for something, screamed to the world, listen to me, listen to me, let's make a change until someone heard them. I always thought and sometimes still do think I have to be someone to be heard. I have to be somebody to have someone to listen to me. And I think, what the fuck does that mean? What what does that mean I have to be somebody to be heard? What, do I have to be Denzel Washington? Do I have to be Viola Davis? Do I have to be Joe Biden? Who Who do I have to be to listen? And then I look in the mirror and I say, you're Christy Archer. That alone, your name alone is somebody. The reason I started this podcast was because I always thought the moment I make it, I'm going to use that that time to express everything I ever want off my chest when I have a name. I have to make it so I can tell the world how I feel, how I can tell my tell the world my ideology. I can tell people what's right and what's wrong and what I want to do and that and I said no you don't. You don't need that. You can tell the world what you already want to tell them without having thousands of people behind you, without having millions of people, or without having anybody behind you. You think when I picked up this microphone, somebody was listening? No, I had to go out there and put my name and have people remember me. And I think that's the problem nowadays is that People aren't talking or speaking about the things they truly want to speak about. It's always, what's the trend? Okay, I got to do my little dancey dance so people can follow me. Or I got to eat a spoonful of cinnamon so someone can look my way. It's like, no, speak about what you're speaking about. When I look at TikTok, let me tell you something. When I look at TikTok... And I see people with 5 million followers, 20 million followers, 100 million followers, 500K followers. And I look at their content and I think, why is it that you have all this following and you're not doing 
Not a damn thing with it. Now, I'm not saying that's for everybody. I want to make that clear. I want to make that clear. I'm not saying that's for everybody. But there are a lot of people out here that have a community behind them and they don't speak out. I'm not saying that you have to fight. I'm not saying that you have to talk about world hunger. I'm not talking about you have to talk about all the bad diseases that are going on out there. But talk about something that matters to you. You understand what I'm saying? Mental health means a lot to me. Self-help means a lot to me. Talking about civil rights means a lot to me. And I, and I use my platform to talk about that. Because that means a lot to me. Yes, I love dancing. Yes, I, I love having fun. Yes, I joke and I talk and I, you know, I kiki. And I hype you up, but I also talk about shit that means a lot to me as a person. And I see people with thousands, thousands of people willing to walk with them on a path. And they won't say one word. It bothers me because I want to be able to get on here and talk about everything that I have ever wanted to say in my entire life. And then I also want to get on here and do what every other fucking person is doing in the world and just make something that's funny and make something that's going to last me 15 seconds. I think about that Nina Simone quote a lot. And then I also look at thousands of movies and shows and hear her songs in them. And I think about Billie Holiday and I see that she is still being played to this day. And and how all those activists are still being talked about. And their name is still being spread around this world. And I I look at all these people that made a change. All these people that they didn't have to. They could have kept going. They could have kept going doing what would have made them relevant but they chose they chose to say something during a time when something needs to be said and you can't tell me and you can't sit here and look at me in my fucking face and say there's nothing to be said. This is not the 1960s. There's nothing to be said like it was back in the day. There is something always that needs to be talked about. It doesn't have to be big. It does not have to be big, but you have to. If you have any voice, I don't care if you have a million followers or if you have zero, if you have a voice, talk about something that you are passionate about. Talk about somebody that needs help, about a place that needs help, or some like a a situation that needs to be talked on. Talk. And I'm not yelling at y'all. I think I'm more yelling at myself is that I need to talk. We're in 2021, and every fucking day of my life, I feel like I'm still fighting for something. Fighting for something. Hell, sometimes I still feel like I'm fighting for my fucking freedom. God honest truth. I feel like I fight for my freedom every day. So I have this love hate relationship with social media because when people do fight and when activists do come out and people come together, it's hard to get your words out. It's hard to be heard because with every informational video with every activist video with every social justice warrior post there's a dance a tiktok video a a, a porn site that's going to outweigh what you say And, and i know you guys see it i see it all the time when there's something important that needs to be talked about Spot spams, whatever you want to call them, they come in and they try to muffle what you're saying. Even though we are in a different era and we are in a different generation, I want you to know that it is more important than ever 
to be able to say what the fuck you want to say. The way I get on this mic and I proudly speak about whatever the fuck I want to say is because I know there were people fighting, literally fighting, dying, being murdered, being lynched, walking, burning down homes just to be able to say what was on their mind. So when I have the opportunity to live in an age like 2021, best believe I'm going to get on this motherfucking microphone and tell you what the fuck is happening. I'm not saying that what I'm saying, what I what I talk about every day on my podcast isn't important. Mental health is fucking important. Self-help is, is important. But I know for damn sure that I'm going to fight more. When I look at all the brave people in, in history that literally put their lives on the line just to get a message across, I wake up every day blessed to be able to say what I want to say, blessed to be able to not have to fight so hard, but I could still make a change. Watching the movie, The Judas and the Black Messiah lit this fire under my ass that made me just want to right the wrongs of every person in history. Just want to Give a different perspective and, and, and fight for what needs to be fought for today. Just because we're not on buses and, and we're and black people aren't sitting in the back seat and we're not marching every day doesn't mean there isn't something that needs to be talked about. That needs to be fought for. There's something every day. Something going wrong every day that needs to be talked about. And people turn a blind eye. And I'm tired of it. I'm genuinely tired of it. The reason I want to fight so much is because I know. If there's ever a day where I need to be fought for. I want to know that somebody's going to be there. With me. I don't know. I want to know that somebody's going to be there for me if I'm ever in a situation where I need to stand up or I need to go against something. People in history didn't do what they did because they wanted to, but they did it because they had to. You know that saying, history always comes back tenfold. We have progressed. We have progressed a lot in due time, but... Don't ever think that the progression we had over the decades would not go back to what it is. So, as I sit here with you today, I ask you, as a human being, not as a podcaster, but as a human being, I ask you to stand up and say something. I don't care who you are. I don't care how old you are, where you live, where you're from, say something. Shake the room, rattle the walls, open up the door, scream at the top of your lungs for something you're passionate about. It could be animal rights, it could be human rights, it could be ocean, I don't give a fuck what it is. Say something. If you have the power to speak, hell, write it down. Ask Siri to say it for you. If you have the power to say something in this world before you die, before you your time is up, say something. Please don't go the rest of your life just sitting there and being docile. If you have the power to make change in some place and somewhere, please do so because that's all I ask from you as a human being. There are so many people that need help. There are so many situations that need to be talked about. And I ask if you have a voice, if you have some type of heart, continue to fight. Not only for yourself, but for the next generation and for the people after that. And you know what? Let's fight now so we don't have to fight anymore. That's all I ask. And that's all I have. Thank you so much for listening to this video. I appreciate you.